All right, good evening all. Thank you to everyone who could join us tonight. Uh, welcome to this candidate forum sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Norwalk. The League is a nonpartisan political membership organization which builds citizen part uh, participation in the political process. We are dedicated to providing information to voters to make informed decisions at the polls. My name is Darius Williams and I will be moderating this evening's discussion. We will be hearing the positions on local candidates from issue uh, on local issues from the candidates for the Norwalk Common Council in District C. The audience is in listening mode only and can see all of the candidates, moderator, and timer on their screens. The candidates cannot see or hear the audience. All forums hosted by the league will be recorded and can be assessed on the league's website after. We will, be begin, we will begin by asking questions prepared by the League of Women Voters, followed by questions submitted in advance by Norwalk voters. These questions have been vetted by a bipartisan panel. The form will end with a closing statement from each candidate. The order that the candidates will have to answer in will be determined randomly in advance. Candidates will have two minutes to answer the question, followed by a 30 second rebuttal by any other candidate. So we have a timer with us. Our timer is Jody Proct and she is assisting us. If she can just, thank you. Yep, and we will begin. So I thank you all again for joining us this evening as we discuss many issues that pertain to the people of Norwalk. So just to reiterate, we have four candidates with us. We have Democrat Jen McMurr, Democrat John Kites, independent candidate Scott Goodwin, and Republican candidate Reed Arbach. So two, uh, two minutes will be extended to every candidate with 30 seconds of a rebuttal, just to reiterate again, and two minutes uh, for a closing statement. So if we are all ready, then we can begin. All right. So if you are an incumbent, what have you specifically done for the city? If you are a newcomer, what are your top two priorities? So that is the first question for tonight. And we will get started with Jen McMurr. Hi, everyone. I just want to thank the League of Women Voters for having this forum and for allowing us all to exchange ideas and points of view and speak to the neighbors that um, we work for. Um, my top two priorities, because I'm a newcomer, are first and foremost communication, honest dialogue and transparency. I'm a communications professional, and so that is a strong suit of mine. I think it's really important as we're looking at all the different issues across the city to have an open dialogue with our neighbors and our constituents on the Common Council. I think answering your questions, hearing from you and working for you is a top priority of mine if elected to this position. Secondly, I'd like to just say the future of Norwalk is a top priority for mine and that encompasses a few different things. One, education, working with the Board of Education in a closer way to realize what their priorities are and what we can achieve together instead of having mistrust and any sort of animosity. I think it's really important that the Common Council has started to work together more closely with the Board of Education, meeting more frequently, and I would like to continue to do that and have open discussions so we can really work together as a team. I also think the environment is a huge issue for our future. We obviously want to increase the tree canopy and have clean air for our kids and our grandchildren to grow up here and enjoy this community just as we have. I think that that also includes mitigating flooding and sustainability efforts. And so that's something that we need to be looking forward to on um, as the city council. And then lastly, and part of the environment is cleaning up the trash on our playgrounds and our fields and making those more acceptable for our children in our community. I know a lot of parents have um, spoken up about this on social media, and I know that um, there have been plans in place to take care of this, but I think that it is really a priority of mine to look at solutions that are real that we can move forward and make happen as a common council. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Now we will uh, move on to uh, Councilman John Kites. Thank you, Darius. And I also want to thank the League of Women Voters for all their hard work and, and making uh, this adaptation to uh, the, the remote format be as smooth as, as it possibly could be. So thank you all for that. Um, 
as an incumbent, I feel in, in my time on the council, I've learned how to navigate the city process and the red tape attached with that. And I can, I'm very proud of the achievements uh, that I've, I've had over the, of, over the years. And it's one thing I could speak to, you know, often, often than not, these achievements, uh, you know, are, are, have happened so long ago or, mm-hmm. or, or forgotten. And, but I, I'd like to just touch on a few of those. And, and that's first and foremost, what's on everyone's mind is our, our taxes. And I'm proud to say in, in the time I've been on the council, we've had the lowest tax increases that the city's seen for decades preceding, uh, preceding that. So that that's great. And, and, and on top of that, I, I can say that there's been zero tax increase this year. So I mean, I think uh, in a time of need with COVID and all the issues going on, I think it's uh, having that now is, is, is more important than ever. Um, and also want to say as a father of two children in the school system that I've been a part of and played a major role in the Board of Education receiving the highest budget increases uh, in the state uh, nearly every year I've been on the council. So that's another proud achievement and one of the motivating factors of me joining the council to begin with. So um, that's something that um, I, I'm very proud of and, 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 and one of my greatest achievements for that time, I'm not on the council, I can look back on that and be very proud of that. And also I wanna speak, you know, seeing that we have Veterans Park, the beach, you know, the, the most used uh, uh, parks in the city here in East Norwalk. And I'll say that we've been able to do major improvements to these parks uh, from fountains to uh, maintenance and to, to, to all sorts of improvements. I think anyone, everyone here on this call has probably been to the beach, spent time at the beach, and you've seen these improvements year after year. And I'm proud to say as a member of the Recreation and Parks Committee for eight years that I've, 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 I've played a role in that. I'm proud of that. My kids use it, everyone, people use it. And, 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 and that's, um, it's been, is that my two minute, Darius? I'll just wrap it up real quick. Uh, also, uh, green initiatives, that's been huge. As the chairman of the Mayor's Energy and Environment Task Force, we were first to, to put solar. Okay. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I apologize. Well, well thank you, everyone. You will have 30 Hopefully seconds. Have to to and so you, you will have 30 seconds. But until then, we are moving on to Scott Goodwin. Hi, everybody. Um, first, yeah, let me, like the other candidates here, thank the League of Women Voters. Um, for an independent candidate like myself, who wasn't even in the race three months ago, uh, this gives me a rare opportunity to talk to a larger group of people in Norwalk uh, than I would otherwise have the opportunity to. Um, so I, I appreciate that. I don't have the, the big party machinery behind me uh, with the resources that come with that or the endorsements from higher ups in the, the state, uh, state party. Um, Instead, what I have is a goal and a mission, uh, and that's to, one, ensure new development pays its way uh, and puts quality of life for residents uh, in the area first. Um, we can't keep, keep giving the farm away to developers. Um, while Mr. Kaidi spoke about how we were able to make it through this year without raising people's taxes, he neglected to mention that that's only because of federal intervention, because of federal funds that, that were given to the state and then therefore to the city to help us offset budget deficits. I sat on a call last week where uh, Henry Dockowitz, the uh, the CFO for the town, talked about how they're going to use another 39 million uh, from the federal government to help offset budget increases over the next two years so that we don't have a budget cliff all at once. That it's like putting the frog in the, uh, the pot of water and then turning the heat up. So. Uh, while great zero taxes uh, this year, the reality is that we're giving developers a free ride. We're giving them seven to 15 years of tax breaks for apartments that, uh, that are not helping to fund our schools. Second, expand transparency and outreach to the community. Too many things happen behind closed doors, require a Freedom of Information Act to get the information out to the public. It needs daylight. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we will be moving on to Reed Auerbach. I wanna thank the League of Women Voters for hosting this forum uh, and to the other candidates. It's great to be here. Um, I grew up in Norwalk. I attended all the Norwalk schools. I'm proud of that. Uh, My two top priorities, I think one one of the main ones is communication. 43 years on the fire department. I'm a chamber of commerce ambassador. Most people in town know who I am, know that my integrity, honesty, I think we need more 
transparency at City Hall. Um, I know that the Zoom meetings are great. They're good for some stay-at-home moms and dads and elderly people, but I look forward to going back, having live meetings. Um, probably uh, the most important one is, so is the development. Um, as Mr. Kaidi said, you know, East Norwalk, I'm still in the house I grew up in. And most people coming into town is their first, you know, view of Norwalk. They come to the boat show, the oyster festival the beach and the development, we're just bringing in more apartments. We're getting rid of businesses and bringing more apartments. And it, it's just, I wanna be the voice for the citizens in East Norwalk and Norwalk. I want to answer their concerns. What, what are their issues? What are their problems? Do they want the development? I just don't want it to be just for the developers. I want our citizens in Norwalk to have a, a say and a voice in what happens for their city. People moved here for a reason. They love Norwalk. I love Norwalk. I've lived here almost my whole life. It's an amazing, diverse city, and, and I see it changing. Um, I just want it to stay the, it's a city, but it has a small town feel. Um, thank you very much. All right, and we will move on to 30 second rebuttals. Councilman Kaides, would you like to start? Sure. Um, one thing I have learned is it's it's a very, very um, difficult balance, you know, with increases of Board of Ed budget requests and other increases to infrastructure, flooding mitigation and so forth. Uh, and then to, to offset that to make sure the development doesn't change the quality of life in Norwalk. I think that balance, I think, Everyone needs to understand that it is a balance that you can't just shut the door and, and and just you know close the door to development and other tax revenues. It always needs to be a part of the conversation. And not just that, you need to take when you talk about I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're over. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right. Now we will be moving on. If there are no other rebuttals, any candidate can rebut. We were just starting with Councilman Kaides. Everyone can put up their, their finger or their thumb if they are going off of a rebuttal. All right. So we can move on to question number two. To you, what is the most pressing issue facing your district? And so we will start with uh, Scott Goodwin. Oh, um, that's perfect. Yeah. So honestly, two years ago, I would not have been sitting here. Um, I would be sitting here, but not here. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I became aware of the, the transit-oriented uh, district uh, plan. And they asked the community, what do you want? What do you not want? And about a year and a half ago, I became aware that everything they were putting forward in the plan were things that the people said, we don't want that. We don't want fortress buildings like Waypoint. We don't want uh, increased traffic. We don't want, uh, uh, you know, essentially canyons blotting out the sun from, from our neighborhood. We want tree canopy, we want parks, we want, you know, better roads, things like that. And uh, instead, again, the plan got put forward in such a way. And Mr. Kites takes that as, as uh, on his website as a badge of courage that, look, I helped make this happen. I don't look at it as a good thing because it's ignoring what the people want it's ignoring what the community has said they need. And it's it's pushing forward uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, Steve Kleppen at a board uh, at a zoning meeting said the plan is done. It's going through. Now it's just a question of how much do we give developers uh, in credits to make it happen? That's why I'm here. That's why when somebody asked, are you happy with the representation? And I voted for Mr. Kites many times. At this point, I say no. And, and that's why I'm running as an independent, so that the people in this community actually have somebody that is looking out for them and not saying, yeah, I love development for development's sake. Bring the towers in. All right. And now we will transition to um, Ms. McMurr. Uh, the question again is, what is the most pressing issue facing your district to you? 
I think the most pressing um, issue, and I'm going to agree with Mr. Goodwin on this, is development and traffic. Um, and I think we can talk about that anywhere from Norden Place to the East Norwalk Village TOD plan. Um, I think, though, that there are always two sides of every story, and then there's the middle. So I don't think that the East Norwalk Village TOD is necessarily talking about these monstrosity buildings that Mr. Goodwin is alluding to. I think it's really talking about developing in a smart way around the train station. I am, live in East Norwalk. This will impact me just as much as anybody here on the call or any of our neighbors. And I think there's a lot of good that can come out of it, but then I also think we need to keep lines of communication open. I agree with Mr. Goodwin. The lines of communication need to stay open and Mr. Kleppen needs to be open to hearing from our neighbors and our concerns. We can't just shut down and stop talking to one another. I bring that back to communication. I also think that what the area looks like should be driven by, zone, uh, should drive zoning, not the other way around. I think we have a lot of vacant vacancies in the East Norwalk area, and we have a lot of lots that aren't being best utilized for our community, and I would love to see some reinvigoration around that area. I would love to see some more small businesses go in where we would have a destination as a neighborhood to walk and bike to. I think there are some good things that can come from it, but I also think we need to have specific rules in place for these developers to come in and play in our neighborhood, and it really needs to impact the community in a positive way, not a negative way. Great. All right. Um, Mr. Auerbach, we will start with you on this question. What is the most pressing issue facing your district to you? Again, I think it's development. Uh, there's talk of the mobile station and the adjacent properties on Winfield Street to take them down and put up more apartments. I mean, here's three thriving businesses that are going to go away. Uh, we do need new businesses. We do need to have people come into the area, but it has to be smart development. Um, again, we don't need another waypoint. We don't need another thousand apartments up on Glover Avenue. Uh, the developers get these huge tax breaks. The city doesn't get that. The people are coming in from other areas. I see New York cars all over the place. They're not paying taxes. Um, I walk to the beach, We have, like I said, we have one of the most beautiful beaches in all of the state. But again, if it's overdevelopment and more and more people are coming in, it just, it's just clogging the roadways of traffic. I'm out talking to people every day, walking and knocking on doors and talking to people. And just because something is okay to do zoning doesn't mean it's right. Maybe we need to say, change some of the zonings or maybe not make it as easy. Uh, developers coming in, you need to have parking. I mean, the parking is horrible in town. Um, but again, I, I do feel that um, it's the gateway to Norwalk, is East Norwalk, like I said. So it, it has to be smart. We just can't let every developer come in and tear down buildings that are existing, more and more apartments, because a lot of these people are just transient. They're, they're not, like I said, I've grown up in Norwalk. I've lived here almost my whole life. And a lot of these people, they come in, they stay for a few years and they leave. My concern and my focus is for uh, the residents that are here now. Thank you. All right, and Mr. Kaides. Yeah, I just wanna speak to uh, the point that was brought up before as far as uh, promoting a uh, development and, and my involvement in it over the years on my website, which I don't have. Uh, and so, I feel like I have been in this for a while and a lot of things have fallen as as that at my feet as I had something <laughs> I played a major role in or have promoted as a positive thing. So I just want to clarify that. I understand at a time where Facebook is the only source of uh, information for many people that that information may get construed and uh, uh, changed once it gets to folks. But uh, to, to everyone's point and to some an East Norwalk resident, Population growth in East Norwalk has become overwhelmingly crowded, no doubt. Uh, I do think that there's some good that can come out of the TOD zone. I think we have a lot of spot zoning, a lot of development that doesn't hold the aesthetics of a village, uh, seaside village district. You can see it. I think a plan, putting a plan into place that that, that limits everyone and and puts a, 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 an architectural design behind any new development is a good idea. Because I mean, there's no doubt that driving down East Avenue, Four Point, Van Zant, Osborne, aesthetically, it's not a very pleasing area. Um, and that I hope 
like I said, there's a lot of good that can come out of TOD, but also there are some things that I think need to be watched. I think organizations like ENNA, myself, and other elected officials need to step up when if they do see something coming in that isn't right for the district. So, and I, and I found over my time, there is power in numbers. So hopefully uh, there will be good that comes out of the TOD. And also beach uh, access to events. So I've always been a, a advocate for limiting beach access uh, uh, races, other other uh, large events that block streets. I, I've heard it over the years. People can't get out of their driveways on a, uh, you know during the summer, for week after week after week. I think you know, and I've said it, and I we have actually adopted a lot of these rules where we limit out of town events from come to Norwalk. Try to just keep it in house and try to limit traffic. Is that my thirty second, or is that on done? So the question was, what is the most pressing issue facing your district? And I think that mostly everyone is somewhere along the lines of congestion and traffic. Uh, so we can move on if anyone would like to rebut before we move on. Uh, now is the time. Uh, does anyone have any rebuttals? All right, we will go with uh, Mr. Auerbach first. Uh, just quickly. Um... I'm also a commercial real estate broker in town, and I brought numerous businesses in. At one point, the Methodist Church by the cemetery was for sale, and I was going to bring in a developer and do a small little development of maybe 45 to 60 apartments, three stories, step back. And the city said, oh, the TOD is never going to come in at all. This is going to be very New England. You come in. It's just like in Saugatuck, the Sam Vault, where, uh, Welcome. All right. Thank you, Ms. Mc Ms. McMurray. Thank you. I just want to say that one of the positives that I think is coming out of this is that the city is ready to incentivize the landowners that are currently there to improve their properties. And I think everybody in the community can agree that we could benefit from that. All right, Mr. Goodwin. Uh, yeah. So first of all, um, I agree with Ms. McMurr on a lot of this, and I do believe there are parts of the TOD plan that can be positives for the area. I, I have seen a lot of good in it. The challenge that I see is where the, the neighborhood said we want buildings no more than two and a half stories high, similar to the Saugatuck area. Uh, and, and instead, what they came back was uh, 35 feet and we'll give them an extra 10 feet if they add public art, if they add a water fountain. So that's my 30. Bye. All right. Thank you. Now we will move on to our next question, which is during past budget cycles, our schools were not fully funded. This year, the differential uh, was made up with federal COVID funds. However, these federal funds are limited and will run out in the next two years. The BOE CFO has warned the city uh, warned that the city will face a cliff in funding when this occurs, resulting in dangerous cuts to our schools. As a member of the Common Council, which determines BOE funding, how will you work to address this issue? And what is your view on how to properly and best fund our schools? So did everyone get that question? What? All right. So we will get started with Mr. Auerbach. Um, I, uh... At this point now, I hear there's a efficiency and a affordability study with the Board of Education. Um, what I would think would be important is to work with the Common Council very closely to make sure that the money that we have coming in is well spent. And part of that is with the development, like I was saying earlier, that if you're getting rid of businesses to put apartments in, you're losing those tax dollars. We need to bring businesses in. That's what we're going to generate new tax dollars to be able to uh, fund the school system. Um, we have to be efficient. We have to be uh, have the schools so that everybody has an opportunity, no matter what district they're in. But again, we have to do this smartly. So again, I, I do think that business is very uh, important with the uh, with the funding of the schools. We, we need, again, like I said, we need to bring in new businesses so we have the monies to uh, do what we need to do with the schools. Thank you. Okay, now we will move on to Mr. Kaides. Thank you, Darius. Um, I just want to clarify that we, we use the term not fully funded quite often. And I just want to remind everyone that you can never give the Board of Education less than you did the year before. 
just to lay that out because as a, as a as a involved parent in in their children's education with SGC and many other ways I've been involved, I, I've heard it from both sides, and and I'm very happy to have the insight I have now into how the budget process works and also the uh, what the end result is in the classroom. Um, so to that point, I will say that it's it's. I believe there are systematic problems with the Board of Education and their spending. Uh, I think we've had a problem with a revolving door of superintendents. Uh, that being said, I think now we do not have a cookie cutter superintendent. I believe we have someone vested in the community. It's no secret her children go to Norwalk Public Schools. I think she's in it. I hope she could stay with us. And to that point, I think we need to have a long-term plan a long-term plan that will allow last a superintendent, a board of education, a council, and whomever is in the mayor's seat. I think that is the key to having a successful board of education, a long-term plan that the next person will continue on with. So I think as far as funding the board of education, like I said, I've, we've given the board of education record-breaking increases nearly every year I've been on the council. I'm proud of that. I hope I will continue that. But like I said, I've seen the issues from both sides. I want to address the issues. And it's not like it's not being an obstructionist. It's just fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we will move on. Uh, if anyone would like to for me to reiterate the question, I will. All right. So Basically, the end of the question is, how will you work to address the issue of when we approach the uh, school funding cliff? So we will move on to Mr. Goodwin. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I think first and foremost, it's um, recognizing that we give developers tax breaks. Uh, if, if you look at all of the new development uh, they get seven to 15 years of tax breaks. That means that the school funding goes to small business owners or homeowners. Uh, as Mr. Auerbach has pointed out, and this is not denigrating renters, but, but renters aren't funding our schools, which means that the burden then goes either to homeowners or small businesses, or we do have to uh, cut funding. I would say Mr. Kaides is absolutely right. And I, I love what the city has been doing to audit uh, and, and look at how finances are being used because we all know no matter how, how good a job you're doing, you could do it more efficiently. You can always find other ways to be more efficient. So the fact that we are auditing that, kudos to Mr. Kaides and, and the, uh, the, the team that asked for that. But the reality is at this point, we have created a system that does not deliver the tax revenues to our schools. We get tax funding from Hartford uh, in the form of givebacks, but the reality is, if you look at uh, if, if you look at Norwalk, we get about eight hundred dollars per student from the state based on the money that Bob Duff recently delivered. Uh, if you look at other communities, New Haven, Hartford, we're talking over eight thousand dollars per student come back from the state to to help fund their education. I would say there's an opportunity for us to lobby the state for more funding. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Ms. McMurrah. Thank you very much. So education is something that's very near and dear to my heart. I have two young children who are at Marvin Elementary School where I've been PTO president for three years. I've also served on the School Governance Council and I am a member of Norwalk Special Education PAC because I have a special education student in my house. Um, I was very impressed with how Norwalk handled the pandemic, especially when it came to education, providing Chromebooks and Wi-Fi for all of the students in need. So I wanna commend everybody in NPS and the Common Council for doing all of that, because I think we did a lot better than a lot of the surrounding towns during the pandemic and they should be commended for that. I think we have some of the best teachers and best staffs in the world and I would do anything for them. 
I think that I do agree with Mr. Kites. I don't like the revolving doors of superintendents. When I grew up, and I did not grow up here, but when I grew up, we would have superintendents who were there for their entire career, 20 or 30 years. And you could really make a positive change that for that time. I hope that Dr. Estrella can stick it out. And I hope that we as a common council can work with the Board of Education and really have a better understanding of what their needs are. I think the efficiency study is much needed, but I want to clarify that it's both on the city side and the Board of Education side. I think there's always places that we can save money and be more efficient. And I think it's great that we're shining a light on both entities. We need to come together and work together and move aside from this mistrust that's been happening over the past few years in the budget cycle. I'm glad to see that the Board of Education and the Common Council are meeting more frequently ahead of the budget cycle so they can get ahead of some of the needs that are coming down the pipeline. I think communication is key. I think transparency is key. And I think working together is the best thing we can do for our future and our children. All right. Now, would anyone like to have a 30 second rebuttal? All right, Mr. Arbach. And then um, yes, uh, the budget increases should not be um, offset by Fed money. That Fed money should be going for COVID usage. Uh, that's one thing that uh, actually would be very helpful. Uh, that's it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kites. Yeah, I just wanted to add. I know I I, I hear uh, tax incentives to businesses. I just want to put that in perspective. And I'm not saying you know, you know. Every development that's happened in Norwalk is, you know, something I, I approved of. But just to put it in perspective, when you have, say, we'll just throw numbers out, you have a development with uh, generating $100,000 in, um, in tax revenue for the city. And then you, you have a development goes up and, and, the, and that tax increases by, you know, tenfold. There is, and when that property comes online in that seven years, so now that property is generating that much more tax revenue. I think there's a misconception. But thank you, Mr. You thank you. All right. So the next question is, if you are elected or reelected, how will you solicit input from the citizens in your district? So we will get started and we will go with Ms. McMurrah. Thank you very much. Um, as I've said before, communications is my background and my profession. And so this is something that I really pride myself on as a strength. I think one thing that I would love to do um, is get out in the community more as I've been doing, as I've been door knocking since basically May um, and beyond. And I would like to have a monthly or a bi-monthly community gathering where constituents can come and talk to me voice their concerns, ask questions, and we can have an open conversation about what's happening, what's not happening, and why or why not. I think communication is something that unfortunately our district has been lacking. I want to be available to you to answer your concerns via email, via phone, however you'd like to get in touch with me and however it's most comfortable for you. But I also think it's being out in the community at events, supporting our different businesses, supporting our organizations and being present. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Kites. Yes, uh, and one th with COVID, um, and one thing that's improved is remote access to meetings. I know it's tough to have to get out of your house, find a babysitter, whatever the case may be, and come to a meeting at City Hall. Very difficult. I I wish more people would take advantage of the Zoom option. Uh, now, uh, seeing that it's available and looks to be like for the foreseeable future as well. Uh, and that's the point, because um, in the past, meetings have been poorly attended, which is always disappointing when you have large items and then you get feedback. Well, I, I didn't know. I get it. I mean, before I was on the council, I didn't know. Uh, there's a lot going on. The meetings, all, all the information is available to the public, but folks don't know. And, and you can't hold that against them because that's just, you know, I've realized the case. Uh, and to that point, uh, there have been several initiatives. Uh, there are issues. You have seniors not familiar with technology, uh, the ability to get online. You have low-income uh, families and people who can't don't have internet access. There have been several initiatives. 
that I personally have been involved with to, to help seniors navigate the world of electronics and, and to get online and, and funding for folks to get uh, internet access. I think that's important. I think we should take advantage of all these meetings being remote and being accessible from home at people's convenience and on YouTube to, to go back and to review it. And I also wanna just quickly say, and let me know when I'm done 30 seconds before, please there is, is that, like I said before, a lot of information is being given uh, and, and being received and, and taken as fact through social media. Uh, I think, you know, we're, we're at a disadvantage there. I, I, I just wanna say whoever listening tonight, go onto the city's website, watch the meeting, read the plan. Don't just take what you hear on social media as fact, because unfortunately that's one of the negatives. It, it, it provides a service I understand for meeting information and specifics, but also there's a lot of misinformation out there. Learn it for yourself. Thank you. All right, thank you. And so the question is, if elected, how will you solicit input from the citizens in your district? And we will go to Mr. Auerbach. Um, yes, um, I feel that going to some of the churches, uh, senior housing, talking to people, getting out there, getting together for coffee, um, just meeting with everybody. Um, the third taxing district treasurer here in East Norwalk, running unopposed. Um, and I'm just very involved in the community. I served on the uh, East Norwalk Improvement Association, Board of Directors of Marvin Beach, where I live. Um, one of the points I wanted to bring up is I, I was talking before about the development there on East Avenue, is that when I was gonna do that small development, we're working on that, the city said, TOD is never gonna come to East Norwalk. A year later, the out of town developers come in, and do the old factory store with 200 apartments. Uh, getting back to the question, though, um, I think one thing that would, I've listened to all the other uh, forums, the other candidates. The one thing that bothers me, nobody's brought up, everybody talks about the development, but nothing's ever brought up about our seniors. What about our seniors and our veterans? Why can't we do some developments with some of them? These are the people that served our country, the people that grew up here and lived here their whole lives. Um, but just uh, getting out and just meeting with everybody is so important. Thank you. All right, Mr. Goodwin. Yes, that leaves me. So um, I, I appreciate everything uh, everyone has said here. I would say that, um, first of all, the opportunity to attend uh, Common Council meetings via Zoom is great, but it, it is a mixed bag because uh, you only see the council members. You don't actually see the other public or engage with the other people in the public the way you do in person. And I, I appreciate the fact that uh, that the pandemic has put a strain. Uh, and I do believe that uh, that Norwalk has stood up to that uh, and done a good job. I feel that with COVID on the decline, we do have an opportunity to return uh, to in-person council meetings if people choose and via Zoom. Uh, there's no reason that the Zoom meetings should stop uh, as, you know, as we move into 2022. Um, the, the other thing uh, I would argue that uh, what one of us needs to do, and I think Jen mentioned it well, getting out into the community. The reality is that, that the people that I've seen that I consider successful uh, actually set up regular touch bases with the community you know, every Saturday from two to four, you can find me here. Um, or, or once a month, you can find me here. And we have a number, uh, as Mr. Auerbach has pointed out, we have so many awesome uh, places in East Norwalk where you could gather, whether it's indoors or outdoors, depending on, on uh, the need. Um, but the reality is, I would suggest we offer up more digital communication options uh, to drive awareness. And, and not necessarily Facebook, Mr. Kites is right about that. Um, but the reality is that uh, as people have moved to digital uh, consumption, that's where we should be trying to engage the community as well, to gather input, uh, as well as to communicate upcoming meetings. Thank you. All righty, thank you. So our next question actually um, gets onto the topic of veterans and memorials. So what would you do to encourage a major war memorial prominently displayed in our downtown? 
Most sizable communities along the East Coast include many dozens in Connecticut, uh, including many dozens in Connecticut have one, but why not Norwalk? So the question is, what would you do to bring a war memorial to Norwalk? How can we achieve that? And we can get started with Mr. Kites. Well, I could say we have achieved that. Uh, the city has, at the last recreation and parks meeting, has been working with the veterans um, um, group. That's uh, been great. And the city is actually picking up a small chunk of the tab for the base. And it'll be coming to Veterans Park, I believe, by spring, which is fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, I mean, I guess what I, <laughs> I could say that. I could check that box off. And I think we've got a strong veterans department group that's organized. The mayor put it together. I give them kudos to him. Uh, we're, they're, 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 they're doing all kinds of great things. Their, their, um, their attendance and their uh, membership has grown significantly. And so I'm very proud of that. And um, I, can't, I, I forget the gentleman's name. I'm sorry. I always call him Lieutenant, but <laughs> he is uh, he has taken the, the reins and just gone with it. So the, I expect a, a memorial at Veterans Park by uh, end of uh, mid-2022. Thank you. Okay. So does anyone have any thoughts on this question or since it's already in the works? Yes. All right. We'll start with you, Mr. Arbach. Norwalk is an amazing opportunity. We have Vets Park. Um, we have the War Memorial down at the beach. Um, I'm actually a Vietnam. I served in the Navy during Vietnam. My dad was a B-17 pilot in World War II. I'm so proud of the veterans and what they've done. And we, uh, we can live like we live because of the veterans. That said, there's the Memorial down at Vets Park. But I remember when they brought in the Vietnam a smaller version of the the traveling one down to the park and going down there. It's, it's so emotional. I, I feel that we really do need to do something more for our vets. And this would be an amazing thank you to everything they've done to serve. Uh, we should be reaching out to all the veterans groups, um, talking to them, like Mr. Kaitis had said, and getting their input and having them involved in what the city decides to do. I mean, we, they're, we're honoring them. We need to have them involved. So I just feel that we have such an amazing city here. I'm so proud of the place I grew up in and live in. My kids were born and raised here. And to have that down at Vets Park would be just, I mean, people go to the Oyster Festival, they go to the boat show, everybody comes to Norwalk, the aquarium, stepping stones. So to have something like that would just be another feather in our cap. It just it just would be uh, an, an amazing accomplishment for the city to do. Thank you. All right, and Ms. McMurr, I believe you had your hand up and you're next, so. Um, I'm just glad to hear that that's happening. I agree with Mr. Auerbach that that needs to be led and driven by our veterans because it is memorializing what outstanding work that they have done and all that they have given for our country. And I would say that if we can do one in Vets Park, why not do even more? All right, Mr. Goodwin. That's fair. Um, and yeah, that's great to hear that that is uh, coming to fruition. I know that um, one of my neighbors uh, lost his son uh, about a year, uh, two years before we moved into Norwalk um, back in 2003. And he has worked, uh, Will Perez uh, has worked for over 15 years uh, to help uh, drive uh, a memorial, not just to his son, but to all the, the soldiers uh, from Connecticut, uh, over 60 of them that were lost uh, uh, during uh, during the conflict of the past 20 years. Um, the reality is that doesn't have a home yet. It should. Um, and uh, I see no reason why it couldn't be here in uh, East Norwalk, given, especially as, uh, as we've talked about, the fact that people come for the beaches. They come for the, the boat show. They come for the dog park. They come for so many recreational activities. Why can't we use that as an opportunity while they're in our area uh, to to honor uh, our veterans. So thank you. All right, thank you. And last question before we uh, move on to closing statements. 
So what are your thoughts about cannabis consumption, uh, a cannabis consumption area in Norwalk? Are you in favor or not? And please expand. And we will get started with Mr. Goodwin. Sure. Um, so I would say that uh, it is a legal product that um, uh, while it is a sensitive uh, product, and it's not something that you want to introduce as saying recreational drug use is okay. The reality is the state legalized it. It's, it's legal now in uh, almost half of the country. So uh, the, the reality is that for us to say that a legal product um, should be uh, uh, only available or used in a specific room uh, seems silly. Yeah, you wanna keep it away from schools. Yeah, you wanna, you want to uh, uh, keep it out of, uh, you know, just people walking down the street smoking a joint like you see in San Francisco or other cities where it's like you walk in and you have a contact high from just walking down the street. So uh, the reality is, though, it's a legal product. Uh, if, if it's legal, then uh, we need to follow whatever the state guidelines are and, and make room for those people that are either selling or, or purchasing. All right. Yes. So the question was, what are your thoughts about a cannabis consumption area in Norwalk? And I believe some municipalities across the state are choosing whether or not to opt in or out of cannabis consumption areas. So that is just um, where the question is from. And we will go to Ms. McMurr. Thank you so much. So obviously I agree with Scott. It's a state, um, it's legal statewide. Um, I think it could bring in a lot of revenue for our city, which would be wonderful, but I think we need to be really responsible about where we place these um, dispensaries and we need to have an education process around them or an education system around um, the use of cannabis. Um, so we're being responsible about it. So I think those are the two major things that we need to keep in mind when we are talking about that. All righty, thank you, Mr. Arbach. Uh, it's an interesting question for me because as a commercial real estate broker, uh, quite a few years ago, when medical marijuana was uh, approved for the state, I represented the only uh, site in Norwalk that it would have been approved for. The state came back and they decided to go to uh, Westport and Stanford. So Norwalk kind of missed out on that. But that said, like everybody else has already said, stated that the state has legalized it. So again, we, we have to be very careful, make sure that it's done correctly, not near schools uh, and regulated so that it's done correctly. Um, but that said, it's, it's not so much for us to decide it's legal now, why not get some revenue out of this? As long as it's done correctly, there should be no reason why NOG shouldn't have it. Thank you. All right. and. Are there any rebuttals? I, I don't believe I answered the question. Okay, yes. Excuse me, Mr. Kaides. No problem. Um, I, I don't think a lot of folks are aware that the licenses are um, issued by Consumer Protection up in Hartford. And uh, Norwalk currently, about a few years back, the Zoning Commission um, designated an area, Business One Zone here in Norwalk. Very small zone, not near schools. Uh, in uh, commercial areas and so forth. So if, if, if consumer protection were to issue a permit, it would most likely go in, in, in those areas. And to that point, um, I, to, I guess everyone kind of touched on it. It is inevitable. Do I want my kids smoking it? No. But I think, uh, I, I think the impact to the city will not be dramatic. I think if at all, we would most likely get one dispensary because like I said, consumer protection doesn't allocate uh, many permits, many licenses for that. I think that's the misconception. Uh, for instance, in, in say California, for instance, where everyone thinks there is dispensaries on every corner, there are not, they're few and far between. And I think uh, that would be the same case. So long story short, I wouldn't have much issue if one dispensary were to open in a designated area allowed by zoning. Thank you. All righty, thank you. Now it's time for rebuttals. Would anyone like to rebut? All right. Well, we will. Okay, Mr. Arbop. Is it okay to re do a rebuttal on a, a prior question? 
Uh, no, the time has passed on that, but <laughs> you can. Points for trying. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely, but at, we are getting to our closing statements right now. So if you want to kind of slip that in two minutes, then you are more than welcome to do so. So thank you everyone for joining us tonight. We are now con uh, have concluded our regular questions and are moving on to our closing statements. And uh, we can start with Mr. Arbach. Okay. Oh. I have a prepared statement. Uh, thank you for the League of Women Voters for hosting tonight's forum. I love New York and I wanna be the voice for everyone. I thrive on the opportunity to listen to the neighbors, hear concerns and have a seat at the table to implement solutions and help make our wonderful Norwalk better. Norwalk's an incredible diverse community. We are unique and special as we are indeed a city, but we are a town at heart. We must have decisions, we must make decisions that enhance the quality of lives for those who live here, but also yet attract newcomers and build a sustainable future for Norwalkers. Development and growth is essential to a vibrant and flourishing community, but smart development and growth is the key. My focus if elected would be to encompass so many issues and concern from health and safety, reviews of parking and working to ensure open lines of communication with residents, uh, review on enforcement, water quality, infrastructure, services for elderly and veterans. Additionally, as a common council member, I would work with the Board of Education in any capacity possible to push for the best for our students, ensuring the most efficient spending of our school budget, ensuring that Norwalk schools are getting the resources, resources they deserve. I will always be responsive and accessible. That is what politics is to me. It's about community. I would be proud to serve this community. If elected, I would make a commitment to always do better and move Norwalk forward in a direction that is feasible and desired. We are in this together. We want the same things. We all want Norwalk to succeed and be great for its future and generations to come. I will keep an open mind and most importantly, I will work to be collaborative and work with both sides to accomplish goals. I take pride in relationships and I investing in Norwalk's future, not for myself, but for all. I'm not a politician. I'm a dad. I'm a grandfather. I'm a resident. I care deeply about the issues taking place in our own backyards and I promise if elected, I will be part of Norwalk's future and helping residents have a voice and seek viable solutions. Thank you for your time and I hope to have an opportunity to represent you. Please vote on November 2nd. All right, very aptly timed. All right, we will be moving on to, <laughs> we will be moving on to Ms. McMurrah. Thank you. I just wanted to take another moment to thank the League of Women Voters for giving us this platform to discuss all these important topics and introduce ourselves to those we haven't had the pleasure to meet in person yet. I also want to thank Jody and Darius for um, hosting tonight. And I also want to thank my colleagues here for sharing their thoughts and opinions. I appreciate everyone here because all we really want to do is work for our community, and that is to be commended. I decided to enter this race because I'm a concerned parent and neighbor and who wants all of our voices to be heard on the Common Council. I do not have political ambitions, but hopes that I can make a positive difference in our community. As a communications professional, I want to bring honest dialogue and transparency to this role. I plan to listen to my neighbors and respond to your concerns. I'm here to work for you and because of you, and I will keep that close to my heart every day in office if I am privileged enough to be elected. If elected to this position, some of the priorities I will hold are to advocate for quality education and accessible and affordable programming for all, to work for a greener Norwalk by increasing the tree canopy and ensuring that we have more sustainable efforts as part of our new developments and otherwise. I will support quality development that supports the whole community, including affordable housing, and I will work for an equitable and quality of life for everyone here in Norwalk. When it comes to working for you, I will put in 150%, and if someone says no, we will find an alternate route to make our goals achievable. Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time. I know it will take all of us working together to achieve our goals and many steps. But on November 2nd, I hope you will take the first step with me by voting for positive change in our community and helping me work for the future of our city. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. And we will be moving on to Mr. Kaidi for your closing statements. Thank you, Darius. And like, thank you. And so, like I said, um, all the League of, everyone involved in putting this all together, League of Women Voters, thank you so much. Um, 
just want to thank all the candidates, regardless of party, for getting involved in this. I know you'll be, I'm sure folks are asking you, why would the heck would you want to do this? It could often be difficult, but I could tell you, regardless of what happens in over a second, when you look back and you can see your achievements, your accomplishments, and and if you plan to be here for a long time, which I do, uh, it's 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 very gratifying. And like I said, with two young kids, I want them to call Norwalk home moving forward. You know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of kids, they move out of town. I want, I want, I would love to see them, you know, have their family and watch their kids grow up right here in Norwalk. Um, I think in recent years, the council's ability to uh, draft policy has uh, declined. Um, I think that uh, we can, if reelected, I plan to, 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 to learn or bring, bring my experience and knowledge of history to those newly elected. We have quite a few newly elected coming to the council and I think experience is needed more than ever now. I, and uh, to that point, I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, in a time of COVID, when things are difficult, I'm, I'm just, everyone's trying to just make their way and uh, hopefully they can make their way to the polls on November 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now we will be moving on to you, Mr. Goodwin. Perfect, thank, thank you very much, Darius and Jody. and. Uh, like the other candidates, I want to thank the uh, the League of Women Voters for, again, for putting this on. Uh, it, it gives a rare opportunity uh, to get your message out. Um, and uh, I hope what I have shown tonight is uh, a diversity of opinion. There are things I agree with Ms. McMurr or Mr. Kites or Mr. Auerbach on. There are things I disagree with them on. Uh, I think like uh, someone had pointed out earlier, uh, the reality is we all share a common love of Norwalk. It's what do you want to do with that? Um, so I, I think uh, as I look at ahead to November 2nd, the reality is I've spent most of the last 30 years um, working to help major corporations solve problems. Uh, companies like Citibank, Unilever, Walmart, um, and, and challenging business problems. And uh, everything from launching new products to increasing market share, growing revenue and profits. So uh, at this point in time, because of what I've seen going on in East Norwalk and because of my concerns for the community, I want to bring those skills to bear for the community. And the reality is uh, I have no political aspirations. I think we've all said that tonight, except for one person who, uh, I apologize, your website uh, uh, is actually Kites for Mayor. Um, so, so that may be why uh, I, I'm misunderstood. Um, I just want to help us th uh, steer through the next few years of managed growth. I want to make sure that that the growth, uh, uh, that the infrastructure grows commensurate with uh, with the the construction and with the addition of new neighbors. Uh, and I want to make sure that uh, we operate with a greater transparency uh, and. Uh, looking out for East Norwalk and District C uh, as a whole. Um, not, not density for density's sake. Um, 14 of the 15 uh, uh, current council, I'm out of time. You can figure out the rest. <laughs> what a cliffhanger. All right, well, thank you all so much for joining us tonight. You know, it, it it takes courage, energy, and zeal to run for office, no matter where what side of the aisle you come, you're on. It takes energy, it takes time, and it takes the will to do more. And so I am so thankful to share this screen with all of you tonight and to have the honor of being a moderator. I thank um, our esteemed timer, Jody, for being here to help us guide through, uh, go through this. And, you know, November 2nd is right around the corner. And I thank you, uh, Ms. McMurr, Mr. Auerbach, Mr. Goodwin, and Mr. and Mr. Kites for joining us tonight for a forum to discuss issues that pertain to the people of Norwalk. You know, that's that's who we're all here for, is our community, the people of Norwalk, and the work continues. So thank you all again for joining us tonight. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.